Celtic Badass of the Week showcases a different badass person of Celtic heritage each week. Those who exemplify the give no shit attitude and come on on top. They may come from our past or our present, but rest assured they come from all walks of life and legend. They are men, women, even old ladies and pirate queens. You don't have to be a muscled up Celt in a fur kilt swinging a mighty sword. You can just be a 4 foot 11 Welsh woman and suffragette who knows jujitsu. Most of these badasses are all too real. While some may be only legend, badass legends though. The only prerequisite for this title is Celtic blood and badassedness. This week's Celtic badass is Constance Markowitz, or better yet, Countess Constance Markowitz. Now she is quoted as saying to dress suitably in short skirts and strong boots and leave your jewels in the bank and buy a revolver. This lady was truly a badass. Now she was kicking ass and looking intimidating while wearing a frilly wide brimmed floppy Victorian aristocrat Sunday hat. Now that isn't exactly the easiest thing in the world to do, but I guess when you're one of history's most pure blooded badasses, you can find a way to make that shit work. Especially when you're packing a silver six shooter big enough to make Dirty Harry jealous. Now known as the Rebel Countess, Constant Markowitz was an early 20th century suffragette, writer, poet, revolutionary warrior, sharpshooting instructor, gunslinging, sniper, and political agitator who spent the better part of the 1910s either busting caps at British officers, fist fighting cops, training Irishmen in pistol marksmanship, or performing all out acts of civil disobedience that saw her routinely locked up in some of the most horrible prison hell holes the British Isles had to offer. When she wasn't serving on the Irish cabinet or being arrested for disorderly conduct, the rebel countess was also a major in the Irish Republican Army, and her role in the Easter Uprising in 1916 helped kickstart the struggle that broke Ireland away from Great Britain as a separate country. Constance was born in London on February 4, 1868. Her maiden name was Gore Booth, which sounds like a small room where people get horribly mutilated, and that's probably fitting because this woman would go on to kick a lot of ass as a sniper and revolver marksman. Um, during one of the most brutal, brutally contested conflicts in the history of Western civilization. Now, her family was loaded, and they owned a huge estate in County Sligo, Ireland. Her pops was a badass Arctic explorer, so nuts that he liked uh, polar bear hunting and shark fishing. So you can probably imagine that Constance had a fairly non-traditional upbringing. An avid reader, writer, artist, and poet, Constant went off to art school in Paris, where she met and married a dang Polish count named Kashmir Markowitz. Now, Kashmir was pretty cool, I suppose, but when he decided he wanted to move to Eastern Europe to work as a journalist covering the events that would become World War I, Constant was like, yeah, you have fun with that, and moved back to Dublin where she was uh, less likely to be chummed in debate by a German artillery shell. Now, Countess Markowitz had been an excellent shooter since she was a young girl, but when the Countess got back to Dublin, she wasn't... She really wasn't at the point where uh, she was ready to uh, start cranking off rounds at police officers yet. Now instead, she opted for something a little less shooty and found an artist in Writers Club, uh, inviting some of the best and creative minds in the city to come to do, you know, chill stuff like read poetry and paint stuff and possibly, uh, possibly paper mache adorable animals and whatnot. Now. Now, it was around time, this time that uh, when she started getting really into the Sinn Féin revolutionary literature that was floating around Dublin during the time. Now, it shouldn't be a surprise to anyone that the Irish and the English haven't always gotten along that well, and around the turn of the 20th century, things were really starting to come to a boil in Ireland. Now, Ireland was part of the British Empire at the time, and a lot of people were pissed off and wanted to break away from you know, a, a form, and form an independent Ireland. Now, Countess Markowitz was one of these people. And in 1909, she founded a militant women's organization called the Daughters of Ireland. Now, working tirelessly, Constance started training women how to fire a pistol, fortify a building, protest injustice perpetrated by the government, and prepare to fight for a revolution. The Daughters of Ireland became hardcore suffragettes, 
fighting for a women's right to vote in parliamentary elections. And in 1911, Markowitz was uh, arrested for protesting during a visit to the British, uh, by the British king. Now, I guess the, the king showed up in Ireland and was greeted by a crowd of pro-British folks waving Union Jack flags, but Constance just brought out a huge black flag and draped it in front and center and during his visit and uh, as a big F you to the king. Some a-hole loyalists tried to whack Constance with a British flag to put her in her place, but according to the story, the wooden flagpole shattered into splinters as soon as it struck her and she just stood there, totally unhurt, just staring the dude down with an epic mean mug. Now after a few months in prison, the rebel countess was back in action, this time helping organize the Dublin lockout, a mass protest against uh, British persecution of the Irish working class. Now when the British tried to starve out the protesting Irish, Constance used her own money to buy supplies and personally ran a soup kitchen that provided soup to the starving workers and their families. This sort of thing went on for a while, but then the uh, volatile situation in Ireland came to an explosion during the week of Easter 1916, when the people of Dublin rose up in an armed rebellion and declared an independent Irish Republic. The Irish Citizens Army, including 200 of the Daughters of Ireland, flipped over cars, built makeshift barricades, fortified structures throughout the city, and rose up in armed revolt against the English. From one of the buildings, the rebel countess holed up for a week um, with a bolt-action Enfield and a nickel-plated six-shooter and started taking pot shots at the British soldiers sent to quell the rebellion. When she wasn't sniping English officers and ruthlessly efficiency from behind her sandbag perch, Major Constance Markowitz, also um, second in command of the Irish forces, directed troops and squads in a desperate attempt to hold Dublin from the British. Now, as artillery and machine guns and other World War I armaments rained down gunfire and explosions, Constance Markowitz and the Irish Citizens Army held out for six long days battling for their freedom even though they were massively outmatched by the mighty um, British Army. When the re rebel forces were finally overrun, Constant Markowitz is said to have kissed her revolver before surrendering it, surrendering it to the British. Now, as one of the leaders of the rebellion, Constance was brought to trial and sentenced to death. Even as her friends and allies were being executed for their actions, this, count, this rebel countess stood tall in court, declaring to the judge, I did what I thought was right, and I stand by it. When the judge declared that she'd be sentenced to a lifetime of hard labor, she allegedly sighed and disappointedly remarked, I do wish your lot had the decency to shoot me. Even though she was sentenced to life in prison, Constance Markowitz only served 13 months of her sentence. She was released in 1970 after a general amnesty was issued for all Irish rebels. And then just one year later, Markowitz used her popularity among the Irish people to become the first woman ever elected to the British House of Commons. Now, Constance would never actually take her seat in the British government, because all members of Parliament are required to swear an oath of allegiance to the King of England, and she's not about to do that. Ireland fought another major war for independence in 1919, and Constance Markovitz uh, once again was at the forefront of the battle. She helped stitch uniforms, train fighters, supplied food to the, with their, her own money, and served as the Minister of Labor in the Irish Dáil government from 1919 to 1921. Now after the war, however, she kind of had a falling out with the leadership because she thought they'd wimped out and agreed to a treaty that didn't grant complete independence from Britain. She headed to the United States to try and drum up support from Irish Americans, and she was able to raise some money and weapons for her cause. The rebel countess spent her later years fighting for women's suffrage, and at one point while imprisoned for civil disobedience, she organized a 92-woman hunger strike that was so effective that she was released a month later. Now, even into her 50s, she loved raced cars, she taught herself how to build and repair automobiles, and was still a vocal proponent of Irish independence. She died of appendicitis in 1927 at the age of 59, and nearly 250,000 people lined the streets of Dublin, Ireland for a true badass's funeral.